Let's keep it simple. The high resolution models for Tuesday's storm system are out, and in this video, we break it down. Hello everybody, the time is 4.05 p.m. and it is January 7th. Welcome to yet another update from Great Lakes Weather regarding the upcoming storm system for Tuesday. And also a little bit of talk on a long-term storm system, or a long-range storm system, I should say, that we have coming for later on in the week. We're going to talk about two of both of those things. We're going to first focus on this upcoming storm system with the high resolution models that have just come out okay keep in mind these are still models we still have a couple days uh actually about 48 hours before this event really begins okay so there's still some things to be trimmed down but again this is the raw model output with the high resolution which tends to hold a little bit more weight because this is a pretty good model okay a pretty good model for snowfall and we'll also compare it to the euro which again uh, the euro has trended a little bit southward um, not too far. It's very. It's not nearly nearly significant enough to change that snow line too much. But high resolution models do put out a bit more snow potential for southern Michigan. So let's get right to it with the HRRR. Again, we had a little bit of snow roll through last night. You probably have enjoyed seeing that on the ground. Some of you. I'm not sure if everyone has, but I certainly did enjoy it. But um, we're going to see that storm system begin to develop. There's actually going to be blizzard conditions probably out into the plains area. Okay, so that storm is producing some snow impacts probably beginning um, as early as today um, in some spots so that snow is starting to impact parts of the United States as, as that low pressure system that mid-latitude cyclone starts to make its way up into the Great Lakes region now you're probably looking at this and you see okay so it looks like there could be some snow starting as early as uh, midnight to on Tuesday morning okay that's kind of what the projection is okay and you can kind of see that some places have some heavy snow falling at that current moment okay so that's midnight on Tuesday you see there's an initial snow band starting to kind of form its form ahead of the main line and you can see that uh, chunk of snow that is starting to show up on the models as well now here's the big question right here okay where is this snow line and rain line going to meet up now the interesting thing about the HRRR is that it is actually showing a bit of snow over southern Michigan for a more prolonged period now will that change snow accumulations that much doesn't really look like it according to what the HRRR models are showing so we're going to get into that in just a second but you see notice here that the rain snow line um, as early as I'd say 3 a.m. on Tuesday is sitting as far south as uh, Indianapolis and then also including parts of Cedarville, Cincinnati, Dayton and areas to the north are seeing snow early in the morning and then a few instances of mixed in rain okay this area is probably going to see some heavy snow okay and that snow is going to accumulate quickly Okay, but I do think that in this pocket of snow, the heavier accumulations are going to focus up in this area, the northwestern area of this snow pocket. Okay, so I think these places will see a bit more accumulation than these places down here because as we hit daybreak on Tuesday morning, you're going to start to see that snow band start to lift off to the north. This right here is 7 a.m. Notice Indianapolis is not seeing snow. Southern Ohio isn't seeing snow anymore. The places far to the north, northern Indiana, northern Ohio are seeing snow. Southern Michigan, much of Michigan, in fact, is starting to see snow at this point as well. Center of low pressure is moving northeast. You got that warm air out on the right side of it and that cold air dipping down on the back side. And you have snow going on in the upper levels. Not really going to be a freezing rain scenario. Really looks more along the lines of mixed precipitation. This is by 9 a.m. Okay, 9 a.m. on Tuesday. You have mixed precipitation pretty much falling anywhere in northern Indiana, southern Michigan. And then that's where you could start to see it get a little bit messy probably on the roadways um, as that heavy mixed precipitation begins to fall. And then by the time we reach uh, 1 p.m., you notice that that snow band really starts to move out of this region here, this focused region of southwest lower Michigan. And it really starts to just precipitation really stops for a little bit but notice an interesting thing is that the GFS and the Euro uh, as of yesterday put out a model output for snow um, sticking around until uh, 11 a.m. before starting to transition to rain this is putting it out until 1 p.m. and then precipitation actually getting a break in the precipitation as that lifts to the northeast so again this raises new questions as to where that rain snow line is going to form is it going to really stick around to the south or to the north i really do think it's still going to stick around the grand rapids area and it really does look like that's going to be the case this is going to be a very tough forecast and it's probably going to be tough for um anyone who's putting out a forecast at this current point okay this is showing the raw model output but again this forecast is going to be difficult for a lot of different places that do 
that do the snowfall forecast. Okay, and we'll look at the snow accumulations in just a minute. But this model only goes out to 1 p.m. We can't really go forward any forward than that. And it's probably going to change as we get to the uh, time. Okay, it updates every hour. This is one model that updates every hour, but also gives new 48 hour data every six hours. So we're just going to have to keep track of that and the next model run. And I'll continue to provide updates as that goes also on Facebook and maybe also um, as a YouTube post as well. So make sure to stay updated in that regard. But this is this system still is looking to bring some travel impacts um, across parts of southern Michigan. I think central Michigan and northern Michigan will probably see a greater travel impacts because of the heavy wet nature of the snow and that's going to last the entire time. Okay. But I do think travel impacts are still going to be an issue for the Tuesday morning commute across southern Michigan, northern Indiana, northwest Ohio. Okay, so still want to keep that in mind with this system. Okay, let is let's take a look at the snowfall accumulation potential here. Let's go to the winter weather graphic, and you can see that the HRR is putting out not as much snow accumulation. And keep in mind that places up here are supposed to get about four to eight inches of snow. Keep in mind, this is just the first half of the system that's being shown by this model. Okay, the second half of this system is going to be on the back side where you see those greater accumulations back here. Okay, that's that snow that's still falling in Illinois as of 1 p.m. on Tuesday that lifts off to the northeast. As we get on the cold side of that system, we might see these numbers go up just a little bit. I really think though that they won't go up too much in southern Michigan after that first initial event. I think northern Michigan is going to be the place to see the snow after that. But you can see that uh, snowfall accumulations have gone a little bit up in the number in regards to uh, southern Michigan, northern Indiana. It's looking like still around the long lines of four to six inches. I uh, don't really think we'll get above six inches, but again, that's going to be a, over a period of less than 12 hours, which means it's going to be half an, half an inch to an inch per hour snowfall rates, and then also including that mixed precipitation that's thrown into there, creating kind of a slushy, messy roadway pattern. Um, the plows are going to have to really keep up in order to stay strong against the amount of snow that's going to fall in this region during the first half of Tuesday morning. So again, just because you're not getting the brunt of the snow, don't be don't be fooled by the fact that the northern place is going to get more snow because I think these places will still see some impacts Tuesday morning with this system. Wednesday morning, not so much. I think Tuesday morning is going to be the bigger issue for parts of southern Michigan. Um, I hope to be out in this um, in a more regional sense I won't be going too far out I don't really want to be a hazard to anyone else on the roads but just keep that in mind uh, that this could be some risky travel come later on Tuesday morning okay and I think it'll start to really taper off by Tuesday afternoon Tuesday evening and the plows will start to be able to catch up a little bit let's look at the euro um, interesting thing about the euros rain snow line is that it also has kind of sh it does show that it's mainly mixed precipitation by southern Michigan around uh, 10 a.m. Okay, as the time we get to 1 p.m., it does shift, shift that rain snow line a little bit farther north, and that mixed precipitation is there. But notice that the rain snow line has also kind of stayed around, along, I guess you could say, South Haven region up towards Saginaw area. That's what's currently being shown at 4 p.m. on the Euro model. Okay, so it really kind of goes to show that there is still a lot to be trimmed down with this setup and there's not going to be a for sure for sure um, setup until the event actually happens okay and that's usually how it is with weather forecasting there's it can be a gamble sometimes guessing what is going to be going to be possible but again we are still expecting that the focus of the heavy snow is going to be in northern Michigan, and then there's going to be a quick burst of snow Tuesday morning across portions of southern Michigan that could amount to three to five, maybe four to six inches of snow across southern Michigan and will be impactful because of the heavy, wet nature, the compact, slick nature of that snow. It's going to be a going to be a tough commute Tuesday morning, so you're just going to want to keep that in mind as you travel during that time frame. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to shift gears a little bit, and I'm going to focus a little bit more on the long range with regards to what is coming over um, later on after the system. So you can see that that snow is going to be moving through. This is the same system that I was just talking about. It lifts off to the northeast. Uh, there is going to be a little bit of a drier system that makes its way through um, early on Thursday, probably into Friday. There might be a little bit of snow with that. This next system is the one I'm watching right here. You can see that it um, you can see the pressure starting to deepen right here. It's another mid-latitude cyclone. And we're going to be on a colder side of the system at this point. And it looks like, based on what the models are currently projecting, and again, this is long range, there's probably going to be a lot of changes, it might shift north again just like the, just like this one did. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. But you can see that the snow is 
kind of more impacting a more widespread portion of the Great Lakes region. And that's going to be something to watch out for because it looks like this could be more of a long duration snow event lasting a little bit longer than this initial system that's going to be moving through on Tuesday. So it's going to be something to watch this system as it deepens and moves into the United States later on midweek. And that's something I'm going to be paying close attention to. All right. So that's one thing to be watching out for, followed by the cold air on the back side, which is to be expected. We're going to get temperatures dropping down into the teens as that low begins to shift through. And we're going to be stuck in a bit of a cold spell for at least a few days after this system that we get come Friday into Saturday. So expect cooler temperatures and be ready for those when they arrive. Again, Weather Prediction Center, I want to show you where what they're showing with this initial storm that could be occurring on Saturday. Okay, so it's showing a 30-50% probability of snow, snow sleet exceeding, exceeding 0.25 inch liquid equivalent. Now, keep in mind that when we forecast snow, we forecast it on a 10 to 1 ratio. What does that mean? Well, an inch of precipitation or an inch of rain is usually comparable to about 10 inches of snow. Sometimes the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, the moisture content in the atmosphere, and the um, quantitative precipitation amounts in the atmosphere can contribute to changes in that, but this is something that we look out for. So that means roughly 2.5 inches of snow exceeding 2.5 inches of snow. There's a 30 to 50 percent probability that this area will see that. That Those numbers will likely continue to increase as models get closer to the actual event and develop more consistency. Right now there's not enough consistency to say that this event later on near the end of the week next week is going to is going to impact a specific region. So that's something we're just watching out for and keeping track on. Okay so that's all I'm really going to go over at this current moment, but I also want to show you, in addition to that, the composite outlook for what is coming with the hazards. Again, there's that projection of much below normal temperatures associated with that system that's coming through. This was issued January 5th, so two days ago, so it has been updated. They'll probably shift this heavy snow a little bit for January 13th to January 15th, and again, it's still a system to be watching out for. But the much below normal temperatures, don't let that show you that it's just going to stay off to the west because if you look at it on the hazards outlook for the Climate Prediction Center, which is accessible to everyone here, by the way, everyone watching this video, but you can see that it does give a moderate risk extending out into Indiana and then a slight risk extending all the way out into the Appalachian region. So again, that cold air is going to have an impact across pretty much the large brunt of the continental United States. So just keep that in mind that the system is going to have far-reaching impacts, not just in the Great Lakes region, but across the United States as well. All right, that's all I wanted to go over with everybody. Um, hopefully this information was helpful. The HRRR is probably going to continue to update, and I'll continue to provide updates as it does. And should I have a free morning Tuesday morning, I will likely be chasing this event. Uh, so you can subscribe, stay updated, and also uh, keep tabs on the upcoming events of the next for the remainder of the winter season. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you later.